Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Cross or Monster Hunter Generations video. I need to get used to saying that. <laughs> but more importantly, welcome back to another episode of the Weapon Workshop. In the last episode, we took a look at the Hunting Horn and in this week's episode, we are turning our attention to the final melee weapon, the Gun Lance. And of course, if you've missed any of the previous workshops, then you can find a link to the playlist down below, which now includes all 11 melee weapons. Range weapons are coming very soon. So, once again, we're going to kick things off in guild style, as this will be most familiar to those of you coming over from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The main difference being your ability to equip two hunting arts on top. However, that's not the only difference. In fact, Gun Lance is one of the weapons that's had a pretty drastic overhaul. So before we run through the moves, let's talk about the new addition. At the top of the screen, you will see this meter, or heat gauge as it's known. And this is used to improve the strength of your regular attacks. You'll also notice this little marker, and depending on where it is in the gauge determines the power of your normal attacks. Yellow is bad, orange is okay, and red is the best place to be. To get a little bit technical just for a second, a gauge is measured in 80 units. Yellow is 24 units, orange is 32, and red is 24. Shelling attacks will raise the marker, standard and charge shots raise it by around 5 units, while the full burst or shotgun burst raises it by 5 units per shell. So of course the more shells you have in your gun lance, the more it raises it. On the flip side, regular attacks lower the gauge by one unit, waiting around for a bit, around seven seconds, also lowers it, and the big one, Wyvern and Fire will lower it by half the current heat level, plus it will lock the gauge in position for two minutes, meaning that nothing you do will make it go up or down. Also, if you ignore this completely and you just keep shelling, then you'll go into what's known as overheat, and this will drop the marker down to the lowest point in yellow, and again, lock it in place for two minutes. Plus, during the two minute lock, you also can't use Wyvern Fire. So if nothing else, just make sure you avoid doing that. It might sound a little bit confusing, but in actual fact, it's pretty awesome. See, what you do is you shell to get the gauge to the top, then you use Wyvern Fire to push it down and lock it in place. If you do it right, you'll lock it in at the bottom of the red bar, meaning that all your normal attacks for the next two minutes are more powerful, and you can attack and shell without a care in the world. It will take some getting used to, but once you get your head around it, you'll probably come to love it. Either way, that's what's new, so now let's take a look at the moves. Starting off with the weapon sheath, pressing forward and X will perform this scooping attack. You can also replicate this by simply pressing forward and X with your weapon drawn. Pressing X will perform a thrust, pressing X a second time performs a second thrust, and pressing X a third time ends this with a powerful slam, which you'll find out shortly has a pretty cool follow-up option too. Note that you can also go into this triple X combo after the scoop attack too, so you can go forward and X, X, X and then X. Pressing B allows you to back hop, but unlike Lance, you can't chain three of these together, you can only do one, but much like Lance, you can also sidestep two. That also means if you don't want to slam at the end of the triple X combo, you can instead hop or sidestep after the second hit and then just reset it from there. Moving on, pressing X and A will perform an upward swipe, and you can mix this into your normal thrust as well. For example, X, X, X and A, X, to end in a slam, or X, X and A, X, etc. And as previously mentioned, if you're trying to avoid the slam because maybe it's too slow for your liking, then this is also a good substitute for the slam because you can instead just go X, X, X and then A, and then simply hop or sidestep out. However, if you begin a combo with X and A, you also have a couple of extra options. X and then A and X will follow up with an upward thrust, and you can also add a second X into the mix for two upward thrusts. But this only works if you lead with X and A, not if you factor it into your combo midway. Now moving over to your A attacks, the move that puts gun in gun lance. Pressing A fires a shell, and at the top of the screen you will see how many shells you have before you need to reload. This particular gun lance has two. Others will vary, and I'll touch on that briefly in a moment. Do also note that shelling eats up your sharpness. Now if you run out of shells, you can hold R and press A to reload. Or alternatively, after a back hop, you can press A to reload from there too. Now if you press A straight after the slam that you saw earlier, you'll unload all the shells in your gun lance. So if you have two, you unload two. If you have five, you unload five. The more shells you unload, the more powerful the attack. And if you press X straight after the quick reload, you'll also shortcut into the slam, which allows you to skip the double X thrust. Now you can also factor your shell attacks into pretty much any part of your combo. For example, X and then A, or X, X and then A, or X and A and then A. And this last one shoots in the air, which can be handy shooting things if they're trying to flee. And of course, not forgetting the triple X combo, which also ends in a slam, and then again, an A input can unload the rest of your shells. Also, if you press A straight after a single shell attack, you'll quickly reload a single shell. So that means you can spam A infinitely if you want to. But again, do bear in mind this will eat through your sharpness. Now if you hold down R, and then you press forward and A, you'll perform a run-in shot, which can be used to close the gap on the monster, and if you press R and A after any attack, you'll perform a charge shot. This can also be done in the air too, with X and A plus R and A. 
and charge shots can be comboed so you could go X, RNA, RNA. Now finally, much like Lance, Gun Lance has a really powerful shield, so you can withstand quite a bit of damage, but unlike Lance, no counter. Holding R will block, and again as mentioned, pressing A will then reload from there. You can also keep pressing X whilst guarding to perform a series of quick jabs, but the big one, holding R, X, N, A together, will do the Wyvern Fire attack. This is the super powerful attack that also pushes down your bar in the heat gauge and locks it in place. So again, as a quick reminder, make sure you use this when you're near the top of your heat gauge to get the best out of it. If you use it right at the beginning of the fight, then you're going to lock yourself in yellow and you're going to be doing the least damage. And of course, there's a two minute cooldown on it, so make sure that if you're going to use this attack, do not miss. Now finally, onto jump attacks. Jumping off a ledge and pressing X will perform a thrust attack. And you can then follow this up once you land with two more X inputs to end in a slam. And of course, as you guys know, anytime you have a slam, that's also a potential follow up for a full burst. However, if you press R, forward and A off a ledge, you'll do a jump shot, which can again be followed with an X input for a slam. Now that's pretty much it for guild style, but as a super quick note, there are three different types of gun lances. Normal shot, spread shot and long shot. These have different numbers of shells. Normal has five, spread has two, like the one that I'm using, and long has three. The more shells you have, the less damage you do per shell attack, but your full burst or your shotgun attack does more damage as you're unloading more shells. But the fewer shells you have, the more damage you do per shell. So if you're looking for an all-rounder, long shot gun lances are your middle ground with three shells. They're the most balanced and they're a good place to start. Again, if this is something you want a more in-depth explanation on, then that's something I can do in another video. For the time being, let's move on to the other styles. Starting things off with striker style, again the first draw will be your ability to equip three hunting arts. And gun lance actually has some pretty fun ones to play around with. But on the moves front, the one major change is the removal of the slam attack. Triple X now does a triple poke instead of following the second poke with a slam. The same applies to say X, X plus A and then X. Instead of the follow up slam you have a high poke. Basically any combo that would typically end in a slam now has an alternative move. Striker has no path to the slam, meaning that there is no way to unload all your shells in the shotgun or the full burst attack. Also after a quick reload, pressing X now goes into the low poke combo again instead of a slam. And even after the jump attacks, the slam after the jump shell is now a poke. No slam, no full burst, let's move on. Aerial style only allows you to equip one hunting art, so be wise with your choice. But as for the moves, well aerial style has a very similar combo setup to striker. Most of these slam attacks have gone. In fact, they're still gone from all the basic combos, but as you guys are no doubt used to by now, if something is gone in aerial style, it's usually because it's now accessible in the air. And that is exactly the case. If you jump off a monster, a teammate, a bomb, etc, and you press X, you will perform a slam. And of course, just like in Guild, a slam can then be followed with a full burst. It's also worth noting that performing the X attack in the air will reload one shell. Alternatively, in the air, you can press A for a mid-air shell, which you can then follow with X for a slam, and again, follow that slam with a full burst attack, provided you have shells left. The regular X slam also applies to jumping off a ledge too, so as you can see, gone but not completely. It's also worth mentioning that because neutral B now makes you jump forward, you sadly no longer have the quick reload after a back hop. Now moving on to Bushido, or the newly named Adept style in Monster Hunter Generations. Again, this only allows you to equip one hunting art, so be careful with what you choose. As for your base combos, well Bushido or Adept is much more in line with Guild. Your slam is back, so your triple X combo ends with that, as does an X input after a mid combo X plus A, and even after R forward plus A off a ledge. The main difference in this style is that you cannot quick reload after a shot, meaning you can't infinitely spam A. However, you also have a Bushido or an Adept option now too. And much like Lance, Gun Lance has Bushido Guard, as opposed to Evade. If you guard an attack at the right time, you'll perform an upswing, followed by a full reload. And if you then press X again, you'll perform a really quick slam, which as you guys know, can then lead into a full burst thanks to the fact that you've just reloaded. Now just before we wrap things up, let's take a quick look at the three weapon specific hunter arts. First up you have Supreme Mountain Wyvern's Fire. This builds up explosive energy which unleashes a pretty massive Wyvern Fire attack that creates a large flaming ball. However, unlike a regular Wyvern Fire attack, this doesn't lock your gauge. Next up you have Blast Dash and this is probably one of my favourite of the lot simply because of how crazy it is. You launch yourself firing your gun lights in the opposite direction which sends you flying forwards with your shield up and you can then press X during this attack to slam your lance down to do some pretty insane damage. Then finally you have Wyvern's Breath, and this art brings your internal heat gauge to its highest point and locks it in place for a limited period of time, meaning that during that time you can spam your normal attacks at maximum power. 
So to wrap things up, let's talk about my favourite style. Again, this will vary largely from person to person, but for me, I had most fun with aerial style, and I think the reason for that is because I am much more used to lance than I am gun lance. Gun lance for me has always felt a little bit more restrictive, so aerial style somewhat frees you up, and it's also super easy and super fun to jump slam and burst. That being said, Guild is probably a close second for me, as I like the fact that I have access to the majority of the original moves, plus the two extra hunting arts. Either way, they're all good in their own way, and it's something you're going to have to find out for yourself, so for the time being, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below and let me know if you have any questions, and tune in next week for another weapon workshop, and finally, one of the three ranged weapons. Thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.